2021. Exactly 52 years ago today, Kenya lost one of the greatest sons, one who helped to lay the foundation for the country's constitutionalism and political leadership. Despite living for just 39 years, his contributions to the political as well as economic development earned him fame both within and outside of the country. But how exactly would this political landscape be today had the assassin bullet missed Tom Joseph Mboya? Here now is the bullet echo. I believe that one day Kenya will be governed by a democratic government representative and elected by the people. And by the people, I include anybody who decides to make Kenya his home. In how many years? who accepts to be treated as um, an equal citizen with everybody else. Had he still been alive, Tom Boya would be 91 years old. As his family marks his 52nd death anniversary today, Kenyans from various parts of the country continue to visit the Tomboya Mausoleum in Rusinga Island, Homer Bay County, partly to see the grave of a man they have read and heard much about. I wish to say that uh, we lost a very great man, a very brilliant man, and uh, a man who, during his time, you could not compare him with his contemporaries. Ilikwani kipao ambacho Mungu ndiye alikuwa amempa. Wajasiri kama hao ni wachache, lakini yule mtu ambaye amejitoa mhanga kupigania taifa lake, tunaweza tukamlinganisha na huyo mtu. Kwa hivyo siku ya leo tumekuja tu kumkumbuka na kuweza kuyatenda yale mambo ambayo pengine sisi wenyewe pia tungependa kuyafanya ambayo yeye pia ni yake ilikuwa ni ayatimize. Uh, Tom Joseph was a great Kenyan who lived his time and within the short span of time that he lived, uh, there is a lot of things that he did to this country. But what would Mboya have become had the assassin bullet missed its target on July 5th, 1969? Mboya could have reached the peak. And I'm sure with his leadership skills, this kind of negative ethnicity tribalism could have not existed because this is being initiated by politicians and supported by politicians. He was not an agent of such characters. So we could have reached a country, a united country, which is built on a very strong background. Remember other people who went, who are taken abroad for learning. They are bright people. They could come back again and help Mboya to manage the country, if he was to be elected the president of Kenya. Look at what he did in economic planning. What he did in economic planning, he saw that really we can have education. And I thank Honorable uh, President Kibaki for this, for free education. But according to Mbuya's idea is that we may have education, everybody can be educated. In what ways would his political ideologies have influenced Kenya's politics? Today, Kenya would have not had what we call tribalism. Because you remember a person like Mboya stood in Nairobi and he won even when he defeated Kibaki. He was very popular. At that time, if there was any tribe, the, the major tribe in Nairobi by then was Kikuyu. But you see Mboya won. Kenya yiko na tabu. Na shuku ya Mboya watu wanataka wanapata kazi. Ndoto kimeleza sikuli ananda kwa kazi. Na sasa wapati. And how about Luonyanza's political landscape? Jaramogi was in the Russian uh, end and Mboya was in the capital, uh, capitalist countries like America. And those were wars that were up there. But down here, they were more or less in one league. The only thing is that Mboya wanted the Kenya we want now for the future. Jaramogi knew that as much as we have the freedom, there are certain things that we must correct. Mboya could go for industrialization. We could have had more factories within Nyanza region. That's what I know. But since the demise of Mboya, nothing. 
The foundation he laid for the country's economic system when he served as the Minister for Economic Planning and Development rings his memories in the minds of many Kenyans, and his contribution to the country's struggle for independence places him among the founding fathers of this great nation. Even as his family here in Rusinga marks his passing on on this day 52 years ago. Reporting for prime time from Rusinga Island in Homabi County, I'm Wycliffe Okech. Thank <laughs> you.